Hey, what's up YouTube? So I was having problems with this tiny hawk. I was getting really bad video and it wasn't like video like as if you get far and you just get static. No, it was like noisy like you had waves in the video, lines in the video and it started getting worse after each flight. So I opened it up and I put uh, one of the capacitors from an old ESC that wouldn't work. I just cut it off with uh, this uh, knife-ish thing, whatever, um, and it was like 20 microfarad, and I soldered it onto the 5 volt pad, which I will show you, and it fixed my video problems. So for anybody who has video problems, I'm going to show you what I did. And also the control. Uh, you like lose control at like 3.2 volts, like you start getting fail safes. Uh, you solder like a one of those capacitors again, you see them right there, onto the 3.3 volt pad. And when I say like this pad, I mean between this pad and ground. So when I say 3.3 volt, is between the 3.3 volt pad and the ground. Like the 5 volt pad is between the 5 volt pad and the ground pad. Uh, so yeah, I soldered the capacitor to the 3.3 volt pad and it fixed my control issues So like I could fly down to like 2.9 volts and then this thing will like start to get really slow So I'm gonna open up real quick to show you the places where you put the capacitor uh, I'll be right back. You just gotta take this screw this one and this one and this one off and then this piece will come off I'll see you in a sec Alright, so I just removed it. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to have to get some weird type of angling on this. But you see right there, there's a capacitor. Right there, where the 3.3 volt pad goes. It's kind of like not the best solder job, because I hadn't soldered a capacitor in a long time. So I soldered on both pads. But what I recommend is you solder one pad, like you you know uh, tin it then you put the capacitor on it align it and then heat up the pad and the solder will melt and then the the capacitor will align like it'll get flat and then you solder onto the other pad like you tin it and you know that way it will look nice and neat the way I did it was I soldered I tinned both pads then I put the capacitor on top and then I heated them up but I couldn't heat them up both at the same time so and if you really can't see it it's like the pad right there 3.3 volt between 3.3 volt and ground and it's right next to the bind button so you won't have a problem finding it so that's for control uh, now this part comes off after I remove the motors Give me a sec to do that. Alright, so I just removed the the motor wires off. You just, you know, I got the screwdriver and I declipped them. Alright, so you see that 5 volt pad there? It's kind of hard to see. It's right next to the antenna. At least with my phone is showing pretty bad quality. Sorry about this. I should just remove the antenna. It'll probably make it easier. So that cap right next to the antenna between the 5 volt and the ground. I mean you could see that it says 5 volt there on your board so you won't have a problem finding where the 5 volt and the ground was. So yeah that one's like 20. I think they're both 20 microfarad but 10 will probably work just fine. And it really cleaned up my video like my video was crap before I'll see if I can get a video so I can show you before and after I'm not sure if I filmed with my fat sharks when I had a bad video but yeah that that fixed the problem and uh, I hope it works for you too so one other thing I'm going to do while I open this is the camera's kind of flimsy in there oh man I think I had a screw fall down no that was something else oh the rubber grommet came off great 
I'll find that later. So, uh, the camera's kind of loose. I'm going to get some 3M tape. And I'm going to put it on the areas where it gets on the frame. And see if it, like, gets rid of it because I'm getting jello. And I'll update you guys right after I finish how it went. You might want to remove the camera. It's easy. You just got to pinch it right here. If you pinch it and then you push the camera forward, it will remove it from the top part. And then, like, you can remove it from the bottom part after. So that way you could, you know, solder the capacitors better. But it's just right there on that pad for the 5 volt and then for the 3.3 volt on the other pad on the other side of the board uh, right next to the bind button. Alright, so uh, I'll be back once I finish soft mounting the camera. Alright, just so you guys can see like uh, what I'm doing with the soft mounting. So I got some 3M tape, I cut it, it was like uh, 5 millimeters long or something. Well, you know, it'll be the, the length of that thing there. And then I took off the other side, which has the red part. And I just jammed it in there with, uh, like, a, a screwdriver. Well, this isn't really a screwdriver, but it has a pointy tip. But the thing is, the screwdriver was too fat to go in there on the second one. So I stuck that in there on the first one, and then... The second part, which is right there, I stuck it in there, and uh, that just stopped the camera from moving. I've been soft mounting my cameras for a very long time now, and it works perfectly fine. Um, you won't have any problems. And um, once I'm done, I'll test it, and you'll see um, if there's jello in the video or not. I don't actually have a video showing jello. So, but after a while, um, this frame kind of gets loose and the camera gets loose in there. So, you're probably going to want to do this eventually. I mean, you can kind of see that the frame has some markings here and here of abuse. Some like bent markings. And uh, yeah, maybe eventually you might have to change the frame after a while. I did break uh, one of these uh, little thingies. You see that one has. Uh, oh, I just got an image. You see that one has 3M double sided tape on it because I didn't like it vibrating. So I put 3M double sided tape in between the broken part of the frames and uh, it fixed it. You know, it's uh, pretty good. You know, it's not going to be vibrating there. It's self-mounted, and it's, uh, I guess, it's supporting a bit. So, yeah, if you start breaking these, just uh, put 3M double-sided tape in between the part that, uh, the part of the frame and the part of the frame, that, the flimsy part that broke off. Um, all right, so one other thing I wanted to do is uh, show the manual because uh, nowhere online could I find the manual. And just in case if anybody needs it because they lost it, you know, I'm going to show it to you real quick. So, I hope you can read this. I'm going to try to hold it up. So, there's that. Nothing really special here. The VTX part. I hope you guys can read this. Sorry if I'm doing a really bad job at this. I should take pictures. I mean, maybe I'll take pictures and leave them in the description for Dropbox. Because, um, you know, I, something happened when I went into race flight and uh, flashed it. I couldn't flash back uh, to beta flight because I, I just did not like race flight. It, it flew worse. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a tune. Like, I couldn't find a proper tune for it. So I spent a couple of hours trying to go back because after you flash the race light firmware, uh, Betaflight won't notice it. And even if you connect it in uh, while having the, the bind button press, which should get you in DFU mode, which it says right here, uh, it doesn't work. 
So what I had to do was go into Race Flight and there was a tab where I could uh, change uh, where I could put it into bootloader mode and once I put it into bootloader mode I went into beta flight and uh, I was able to flash back so maybe somebody wants to flash back to beta flight from race flight uh, so the easy fix is just use rate flight to put into bootloader exit out of race flight and then go into beta flight and flash whatever you want um, yeah so these little props that I have uh, they're all right they just like they kind of hit the ground sometimes so you got to be careful when taking off sometimes they won't even want to take off uh, I broke the original props in one day legit one day I broke it like it just cracked so I'm not gonna deal with that shit of Emacs only sending one pair because they think their shit is like impossible to break it's not I broke it in freaking one day um, yeah so I'm gonna put this thing back together and we'll see the improvements uh, air noise but when you put these back uh, try to make sure that you stick both antennas throughout outside of the canopy so they could be facing uh, uh, vertical when you're in flight that way you have the best signal uh, don't worry about them being so close to each other uh, you're not really gonna have a problem I know like in theory it should be bad but it's gonna be better than having them sitting her you know, in the, on the horizon, you're going to be having worse signal because most of the time you're going to be flying like this and the antennas they receive from the sides not, not much from the top or the bottom so like they receive and transmit from the sides so that's the best way to put them alright, so I'm just going to finish this up and then we'll see what happens 